Welcome and thank you for joining the webinar today. My name is Amanda Jadro. I'm the Portfolio Manager with TRACOM. As a financial solutions provider to staffing and consulting industry, it is our philosophy to be an active member in the staffing industry by staying abreast of the ever-changing marketplace. For that reason, TRICOM was pleased to launch the Industry Insider Webinar Series designed to share our expert knowledge and resources with our fellow staffing industry colleagues. One of our core values is to build relationships and become a leading resource to the staffing and consulting firms nationwide. Our presenter today is Jenny Callender. A member of Wintrust Marketing Department for more than five years, Jenny graduated from Beloit College with a focus on journalism and sociology. Her experience includes creating and managing the company's content marketing and maintaining more than 60 brands across multiple social media channels. Wintrust, a financial holding company offering community and commercial banking, wealth management, and mortgage services, has served Chicago's community since 1991. As a locally based and locally run company and a family of true community brinks, Wintrust believes in investing in and giving back to the areas it serves. The Wintrust Community Bank family has more than 155 community banks locations across the Chicagoland area, southern Wisconsin, and northern Indiana, and each serves as a one-stop shop for any personal or business financial need. Today, Jenny will be presenting more than just cute puppies using social media to grow your business. These days, social media is more than just a place to share pictures of your cute puppy or shots of the meal you just made from scratch. Social platforms provide a very real way to grow your business and increase brand engagement. In today's Industry Insider session, you'll learn how to approach social media as a tool for your staffing firm. Jenny will discuss the importance of social media, social media do's and don'ts, best practices, defining goals, and creating content. By the end of this session, you'll know how to use the social platforms of Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram as a tool to grow your business. If you have any questions during the presentation, please utilize the Q&A feature located on the right toolbar. After the presentation, there will be time for questions and an opportunity for you to give us your feedback on today's webinar by completing a short exit poll. Please join me in welcoming Jenny. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks for kicking it off. Um, and thank you to everyone for joining this afternoon. Um, let's jump right in. So, I obviously couldn't call this presentation what I did and not include a picture of a puppy, right? So um, it might be hard to remember, but at some point social media was way simpler than it is today. Um, it started, many of you might be aware, but it started as uh, just in colleges, connecting friends, a way for people to connect up, to stay in touch. Um, it expanded to a wider audience and, and mainly you know, was used for a long time as just a way to stay connected to friends and family. Today, though, it's gotten a little more complicated, right? There's a lot going on. There's a lot to keep track of. There's a lot flying at us all at once when we're online. There's no need to get overwhelmed. So we're going to start simply. <clears throat> we're looking at your personal brand. So this gets into basic marketing principles, but these same principles apply to social media. Um, you want to think about your reputation, your personal, what your company stands for, what your business stands for. Um, so go back to some of those basic principles. Personal and professional relationships, mutual respect, um, promises that you deliver every day as a business, knowing your industry, being an expert at what you do, doing and saying the right thing at the right time, and being smart as much as possible. So this is, uh, you know, this is how you think about your company every day. The same thing applies to how you think about your company and how you want to be perceived online. So how can you hurt this brand? Same kinds of things. A failure to deliver what you've promised, saying or doing the wrong thing, um, this is pretty much all common sense, right? None of us are stupid. 
We've all gotten where we are for a reason. Um, don't let one thing that you post online in that moment help define you as your company as a whole. So that's sort of how we're going to look at all of this today. And we're going to start pretty basic. So social media, we should look at it as a magnifying glass. It calls attention to the good things you do and magnifies them. In the same, same regard, it also calls attention to the bad things that you do or may say online. Um, so think of this as an ant, you know, in the magnifying glass. You don't want to be the ant in the wrong way, right? You want to be highlighting things, the positives about your company. So there's another way to look at this. Let's go through a little exercise here. You have a billboard. Everyone who sees it knows it's you. You can put up any image and up to 20 words. So what do you put up? No one would say a photo of me drunk, something ignorant, racist, or just dumb. No one wants to start a political fight, especially not when you're representing a business, right? So when we think about Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Let's think of it like a billboard. So it's easy to put something up quick. That's sort of the beauty of this uh, channel, of these channels, right? But that can also hurt you. It can hurt the company that you've built. It can hurt the relationships that you've formed with people around you. And you'll hear me say this quite a bit today. It's permanent. A lot of times people think of this as like, oh, I can go back through and just sort of delete some of what I said. You have no idea where it went from there or who saw it or who they've told. So we need to really approach this platform as whatever you're putting out there, imagine it's sticking. So you have some things to decide when you approach social media. If you're using social media, which channels are you using? Where is your company's target audience? Where are the people that you want to connect with? Which channels are they using? And only sign up with for what you're capable of doing in the moment. Whatever you can do well is the best place to start. And so be honest when you're, when you're approaching all of these channels. Where should you begin? Where can you be posting consistently, sharing messages consistently, representing your brand consistently, and where are you going to get the most impact from that? And then you need to determine what of your online presence is personal and what's professional, and then really make, draw a line between the two. So if you're using a channel for your business, then any of your personal beliefs, anything that goes beyond your business practices and principles should be separate. Um, and what do you want to protect of that? You obviously don't want to be sharing personal information on a platform that where, you know, is a much broader audience than maybe just your friends and family. So Really determine what you want protected and what you want public. And then lock down any personal accounts. So this gets into some, some logistics of social media in general. Um, but all of these accounts have, have privacy settings. So make sure that you are aware of those settings. Make sure you're aware of what you're, what you're letting out into the world and what you're keeping locked down. But again, that doesn't, protect, that doesn't always ensure that it's not getting out there. So really be careful about what you want to put out there and really think it through. And again, overall, you really just want to be thinking about what that professional image is, right? Who you're trying to target. Um, really think back to how you created this company, what you want to represent, and make sure that what you're putting out there is supporting that. And um, when it comes to listening, so, so that's where we start, right? We decide where we want to where we want to be, and then we start, there's another piece of this, and that's listening to what's going on around you. So the best place to start is to start with other companies, competitors, your peers, other people that are doing things well can teach you a lot about what you want to be doing, and they can also teach you what not to do. So start keeping an open, an open mind about that, start following, um, you know, people that you feel like are influencers to what you're doing. What do you like about what they're doing? What don't you like? What would you share? Um, follow what and who you like. And then when it comes to actually posting, 
there are two ways to tackle this, right? There's, there's the content that you're going to be sharing out, um, and, and that includes articles, it includes posts, it can, includes images. Um, that's going back to, you know, those, those people and those other brands that you're following. That gives you great, great, a great place to start to share your own content. Um, you want things that are going to make you look intelligent and professional and reliable. Those, that sets your base of, of starting to really show your online presence and who you are. And let's keep in mind that we can be occasionally playful with it, right? Social media is fun. That's why people use it. Um, it doesn't have to be serious all the time. It can be fun and playful, and that's, those are the things that get shared. Those are the things that people want to see, they want to share with other people. It's fine to stop there to a certain extent. So especially when we're just getting started, um, you know, this, this gives you a, a good solid base. And even if you just in the beginning, you know, are doing more of the listening side and sharing other people's posts, that's still doing something for your brand, right? Every time you share something, it should be going back to those principles of what you stand for, and those things should be supporting that. So it all helps your overall presence. But the next step is to post your own content. So do you have something to say? Um, and then do, you, do other people want to hear what you have to say? So the best way to approach that is to post about what you know. You're an expert at what you do. So that's, that's the realm, that's the, the avenue that you're going to feel most comfortable in, and people are following you for that reason. Um, we're going to go into more detail about content here in a little bit, but um, the point to make here is to really stick to your expertise. And then as much as social media is very immediate, we can take our time. Um, don't post right away, write, edit, come back, edit again, maybe even, you know, sit on it for a day another day, um, and then post. Because as much as social media is immediate, that's, that can make it dangerous as well. There's no reason to hurry, um, especially with some, some well thought out content that isn't necessarily timely. Um, so really think things through. And so this is just to give you some overall sort of thoughts about social media and what your goals might be. Um, be deliberate with what you're doing. So yes, you want to respond to things in a timely manner. You, um, and when it comes to this, we're talking strictly about content here right now. Um, but you don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be such a, an immediate action. Really be deliberate in, in what you're putting out there and the reason why. Um, be consistent. So whatever schedule you decide, Make sure that you're sticking to it. Um, obviously, you guys have day jobs, so let's not get crazy. Really be honest about how often you can post and then set those goals ahead of time and make sure you're hitting them. Um, be intelligent. So we always want to make sure what we're putting out there, again, reflects our brand and, and reflects the fact that we're experts at what we do. So make sure you're sharing smart material that really connects with what you do. And that feeds right into relevance. So make sure that you're sticking to your brand, your interests, your strengths. You obviously, this one is easier said than done, but you, you'd always like to be engaging with what you're putting out there, right? You want people that, to look at it and be want, want to share it. Um, and then let's be consistent. Be clear about who we, we work for. This is more of a technical thing, but you're speaking for yourself. Just as you saw that little, um, opening disclaimer in the front of this presentation, be upfront with people that, you know, if you're posting something, you know, that, that you are, um, if you're posting something that you are, who you say you are, you're representing who you say you represent, and then be mindful of that. Um, and then also, if you are to share other people's work, some of this, like I said, you guys, is very common sense, but it's worth pointing out here. If you're sharing from other people, don't take credit for it. Be sure to let people know who you're sharing from if it's not obvious. And then be generous about it. Share posts, share other people's posts, share other information that's relevant to what you're doing, and give credit where it's due. And 
this is a big one. People like a company to represent themselves as humble, to have a, you know, um, you can't always control what's said about you or who says what to you, but you can have a plan in place for how, you, how you'll respond to things, whether they're negative or whether they're positive. Um, so these are some things to think about. When you start being active online, you're opening up a whole door to people who may not have had such access to you. So be ready to, um, to respond and have a plan for it. So when we think about content, we are not just competing with our industry, right? We're competing with everything that's online, and there's a lot these days. So be mindful of this. It can seem overwhelming, um, but we've got some, some steps to help create content that really lets you stand out. So full dis disclosure, I'm going to give credit where credit is due, like I said. Um, this slide came from a presentation from my boss, but I think it is it really illustrates a good point, a good uh, approach to, content, to creating content. Um, so we'll go through this quickly. Obviously, there's more to be said about each of these categories. And as I said earlier, some of this, you know, we've got lofty goals when it comes to content. We're trying to create um, content that's shareable. That can be easier said than done. I know because I manage a bunch of social media accounts for a bank. So it's not always the most interesting, right? We have to sort of think outside the box and get creative with how we're um, putting information out there. So this is a good illustration of how to approach your content. We're looking at each step here. Um, so social currency. People want to be in the know. They want information. They want to know that they're on top of it. Um, they also, there are certain triggers, right? You should. Um, be the answer to a problem, and your content should help them think of you first. So you're presenting a problem and a solution right in one, in one step, where someone then later on down the line, when they're trying to look for a solution for another problem, you come to mind. That's the goal there. Um, we're probably all aware that at this point, it seems crazy, but people really like to feel emotionally connected to things online. They're not afraid to cry. They're, they're very likely to share a video that, that brings up some, some other feelings. That can be a tricky one. That can be very challenging when we're talking about business content, right? Um, but we can really keep that in mind and try and connect to people on a deeper level. That's the point to make there. And then, um, obviously, again, easier said than done, but we're trying to create things here that can be shared in the public. We want things to catch on. We want things to be, you know, this to be something that is, is sh a shareable piece of content. And, um, and we also want it to be practical. It should be useful. And this, this is the category that a business can sh really shine. So you know what you want, who you want to be talking to, and you know what they want to see. You have to be on the edge of that and, and know what people can use and share the things that people can actually use. And then lastly, um, you know, one thing that, that has really happened in the last few years is that content marketing has really taken the main stage. It's, it's partially because of social media, um, but in general, marketing is looking towards stories. How can we tell a story in an interesting way? How can we make a brand really shine by, by illustrating a story? So keep, it, keep that in mind. And, and the other main thing about content to remember across the board is that if something works and you're seeing a lot of um, activity around it, repurpose it. You can take a piece of content, let's say you wrote an article for something, you can take that and break it into smaller pieces, more digestible pieces for Twitter or, um, you know, if something is useful this week, remember it for later because a few weeks down the line, you know, people have short memories, and that might be useful, or you might hit an odd, uh, you know, people that you didn't hit the first time. So just keep that in mind. You can always reuse. Obviously, because we're talking business here, I want to stop for a second and talk about LinkedIn. Um, it's, 
a huge networking tool. If you're not on LinkedIn, you definitely should be on LinkedIn. This is connecting you to people you know, you're able to follow people and um, companies. It helps you prospect, you're able to connect with people that you maybe couldn't have as easily in person. Um, and you're, you can get introduced to other people. So you may know someone who can connect you to someone else and they can help facilitate that, um, that new opportunity for you. And it also allows you to come out um, out of the gate with more information than we had before. You know, you can learn a lot about customers, potential clients, learn about companies and people, and ultimately at the end of the day, going back to our simple um, goal here, you want to look smarter to the people and the brands that you're interacting with. So, and there are plenty of channels to take advantage of besides LinkedIn, obviously. We've come a long way in the social world. There, there are more channels than we can even grasp at this point. And this infographic is, is a little dated probably now. It's probably even more than this. But that last slide maybe was a little stressful. Remember, it's a lot, but there are certain things to keep in mind. It's easy to get overwhelmed. Like I said, there's a lot going on. There's a lot out there. There's a lot being thrown at you. There's a lot for you to listen to, to respond to, um, to think about. And so, again, I can't stress this enough. Start small. It doesn't have to be all tackled at once. And this is an evolving thing. It's constantly changing. So um, just be, be aware, too, that you can always add on later. What you're doing today doesn't have to be what you do tomorrow. And it's easy to get it wrong. So that's the point. Start small so that you can you make sure that you don't get off on the wrong foot. Um, do one thing well. Set rules for yourself. So this is where um, some immediacy is definitely important. If you get a response from someone, if you have activity, that's where you do want to respond immediately. Still think it through. Um, but this is it, every chance, whether it's, I don't want to say, you never want to get negative feedback from people, obviously. But you should look at social media as every interaction is an opportunity. So it's either an opportunity to connect with someone new, it's an opportunity to show what kind of company you are or who you work for. Um, so that's where responding right away, being transparent, being empathetic to a situation really helps you shine. And there are rules. There are rules that, you know, obviously on response time, things like that, there are also rules you need to set for yourself. Um, one thing I feel very passionately about is grammar. I come from, obviously, from a, um, a journalistic background, so grammar, um, even on social media, is always very important to me. And so you have to sort of define what's, what's most important and what you can really keep up with. And at the end of the day, it's important to remember it's, it's, this is a tool that's easy to do right. It doesn't take a whole lot, um, you know, to really shine. And so remember why you're here. Remember what you're focused on. Really listen to the feedback that you get. And then react to, uh, appropriately from there. Um, and obviously those are, you know, being consistent again and, um, and engaging those are are, are things that are lofty goals, but be honest about them and, and what you can do. So I really like this quote when it comes to social media. Not everything that counts can be counted, and not everything that can be counted counts. We are talking about measuring your success. So here are some things to keep in, in mind about measuring behind what you're doing. Not every social media success can be measured. That's important to note. So some of your day-to-day -day wins are small. Um, maybe you had a good exchange with someone on Facebook. Maybe you got a few retweets today, um, or at least just you know people were liking what you were putting out there today. Those are important. Those are all relevant, and those are things that you should be tracking along the way and keeping note of. If something does well, you want to be able to replicate that, right? So that takes a lot of trial and error. Some of this is 
maybe I thought an article would do really well. It didn't do as well as I thought. And so maybe next time I'm going to try a different approach to it, or maybe next time I'll try a different time of day. Um, maybe I'll create an infographic instead or find a, a more visual way to present that information. Um, it's always about testing and seeing what works. So just because some of this can't be measured with numbers, um, there are some things that can, and you should set goals for yourself. So what sort of interactions are you getting? How many likes? How many shares? How many new connections are you making? Ultimately, at the end of the day, this is about lead generation for businesses. So that's the biggest success that you can measure. Um, this is obviously the most easy to measure, I think, with, with um, LinkedIn to really see how your, your network is growing and who, you know, how those connections are going. Um, be sure to check this progress. Really track it. Go back and revisit some of these goals. And like I said earlier, this, the world of social media is endless. So the goals you set for yourself today may not be your goals tomorrow. Or you may need to revisit those goals and say, those were some pretty big goals. I'm not sure that you know, I'm going to be right out of the gate hitting those things that I wanted to hit. So get, you know, think about things a little smaller. Start off a different way. This is constantly evolving. So make sure you're checking back with what you initially intended. And then here are a few things to remember about your overall social media efforts. So this is one channel. I, I'm in marketing, so I know very well that, you know, we try and contact people a lot of different ways. We try and get in front of people a lot of different ways. The beauty of social media is that you, it does give you an opportunity to stay in front of people more consistently, um, but it's not the only thing. It's one part of the larger mix of things. And it's, can't stress this enough, it's really important that people feel that you're authentic to who you are and who you're trying to represent. So don't try and hide anything. People on the Internet especially can really sniff out when something is not as it should be. Um, and again, here's, here's what I promised would come back. This is definitely permanent. Um, and you're, whatever you're putting out there, people are going to see which again leaves you open to um, being vulnerable in a way that you maybe aren't used to, but you got to grow a little bit of thick skin here. Um, and definitely, most definitely, I can't stress this enough either, have a plan for how you will respond to those types of things. But at the end of the day, we also want to remember that this is a really useful tool and it's, and it's perfect for what you guys do. You come from a background where you, you know, You've gotten where you are for a reason, and it's, you know, based on one-on-one -on -one sales. It's based on engagement, conversations that you've had with people. You have these skills already. It's just applying it to this new medium. So um, it should really be looked at as, you know, taking your skills that you already have and applying them here. Um, so, yeah. Things are permanent. If you don't want your spouse, your kids, your grandmother, your boss to see it, don't put it up. Um, and then back to just some, some things to be thinking about and thinking through consistently with your online presence. You want to be deliberate. You want to be consistent, intelligent. You want what you're putting out there to be relevant to who you're speaking to and engaging because if it's not engaging, they're not going to want to follow. They're not going to want to see what you post next. Um, and they're not going to want to share it with their friends. Um, and you want to be transparent about what kind of company you are and what kind of messaging you're putting out there. Generous, humble, and again, overall, smart. So the basic thing I'm trying to say here is don't be the ant. Or if you are the ant, make it for a good, a positive reason. And that about sums it up. Wonderful. Okay. So at this point, we can open the floor for some questions. Um, we will be able to provide a copy of the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I know someone is interested in that, so I will go ahead and email that after the uh, presentation is completed today.
If you have any other questions, please at this point go ahead and enter them in the Q&A or the chat feature. I do have a few that have come in, so I will start off with those. Um, the first one is, how often should we post and are there um, specific days or times of the week that is best? Yeah, so um, there are a couple points to hit on this. One is back to the testing. Um, it depends on your audience, a lot of this. So, and it also depends on the channel, so that's the other point to make. So, if we're talking about Twitter, obviously your frequency on Twitter is going to be higher than on Facebook or on LinkedIn. You don't want to bombard your audience, um, you know, by giving them too much and being, you know, we, if you use social media personally, you know you don't want to see the same thing in your feed or, um, you know, the same company posting a bunch. So be conscious of that. Um, but it does come with a little bit of testing. And, and honestly, the way I approach this sometimes is just to think about when I'm most on these different channels. And then that's sometimes where I start. Um, you know, weekends, I, I try and, if you use tools where you can schedule out, that makes life easier too, obviously. So, you know, you have to fit it into your schedule as well. Okay, and did you say if there were better days or times that that you think that the audience um, would see your feeds best? Yeah, so I would think, um, so in the research that, that I've done, nights and weekends tend to do pretty well. Um, but like I said, that might be slightly different um, depending on on your audience. So. You know, I would say nights and weekends are a good place to start and then sort of see how your interactions are going. Maybe you try, you know, midday a couple, figure people are on lunch breaks, maybe are scrolling through things. Um, but yeah, I think nights and weekends are a good place to start. Okay. Specifically, what techniques would you suggest to use to grow your audience on Facebook? Um, okay, so Facebook makes this part really interesting. They have, um, across the board these days, online ads are getting really popular. And Facebook gives you a good opportunity where if you're willing to throw a little bit of money at it, um, it can really help drive your traffic. And they have really nice um, ways of targeting people. So you can tell them by area, you can tell it by area, uh, you can tell it what kinds of interests, you know, you're looking, you know, to grow your audience and which, uh, what your audience might be interested in. Um, and, you know, you, you also set your budget. So you can tell it, I want to, you know, I only want to spend 20 bucks a week even. I mean, it's down to, you know, you know, I want to spend 20 bucks a day or, um, and then you can also set limits for it. So I really think a very useful tool to grow your Facebook audience is the Facebook advertising, for sure. Do you have a recommendation of what a good budget is to help get um, the awareness out there about your company and your brand? Um, honestly, you'll hear a lot of different uh, you'll hear a lot of different opinions on this too. So this does go back to testing. Um, I know. I've run um, campaigns, mini campaigns through through Facebook where I've had a budget of $10 a day um, and I've seen significant increase to, to the website that I was driving to. So, um, you know, I think in general my experience has been to set a budget for each day and then to give Facebook the limit of where I want it to go. You also um, can target um, – different, you can tell it how, how broad you want it to get. So like friends of friends is one way to do it. So, you know, you're connected to a group and then their connections will start to see those ads. You can really put um, some good limits around it. But I, I really think in general, um, the advertising, even if you're doing five bucks a day, I think you'll see an increase. Wonderful. What are some of the ways to handle negative comments or reviews? 
Yeah, this one, this one's tough. Um, so my best practice for how I handle negative comments online um, is to get it offline immediately. <laughs> so as quickly as you can offer to, you know, I would love to discuss this in person. Is there a best way I can reach you or um, can you please give me a call at, you know, obviously you don't want to always put your personal information out there. So if, if you can um, private message, like I, I usually offer, I respond to a comment in public, right? So people see, so the rest of my audience can see that I'm responding and I'm, I'm very responsive to negative feedback. Um, I also try to um, communicate to the person, hey, you know, I take criticism very seriously. That's how I learn and grow. So this is absolutely something that I want to discuss with you, but I'd much rather have a, you know, a pick up the phone and call you conversation. So you want to let the person know that you're taking this seriously, that let the rest of the world know that you respond in a, in a good way to things, um, because obviously you're public and everyone else can see it but then you want to immediately take it offline as soon as possible because the worst thing that can happen is that you're engaging with someone online back and forth and then it becomes more of an argument than an expression of how your brand deals with negative feedback. Is there a good way to elicit positive feedback or comments from your target audience? So, if you know of clients, um, one tool I, I like to utilize is if you know of clients that speak very highly of you, there's nothing wrong with asking them um, if you can use a quote from them. And then you can post um, to let other people know more of a testimonial style thing. This goes back to also like storytelling. It's important for you to communicate, like if you've had a good experience with a client and you have a good story for how you met or how you started interacting with that client, it's useful for a couple things. It's good for that relationship because you're telling them, I value you so much and I value what you're telling me about my company that I want to share it with others. And I want to help give you a little bit of, um, you know, publicity in a way. But then it's also showing other people in a way that they can really relate to how you interact with your, with your customers. And I think that's a really good place to start just to to try and elicit more positive feedback. Ideally, someone would see that and say, I too have had a great experience with so-and-so and comment on underneath it, right? Okay, fantastic. How far should you stray away from your industry or expertise in order to create content? So, I think a lot of people um, differ on this topic. My my best practice is if this is not saying something about the company I work for in a positive way in terms of what we stand for. So obviously as a family of community banks, we're very invested in our local communities and we're um, you know, in tune with those communities. So I share a lot of content about what's happening in those local communities. Um, but then I also want it to be something that's shareable. So um, I want to make it as interesting as possible, but it should tie back to either a core value of your company, like I'm saying about our community banks, that that's a core value of what we stand for, or when it comes to finances, you know, it's going to connect that way. Um, on the payroll side, you know, anything that's going to um, really support what you do is great. You want to stray, if you're going to stray for something that's interesting and shareable and you're hoping that it catches on, that's great, but make it relate back to you somehow. That's my best advice. Okay, yeah, great advice. There might be a, a good catch line or way to um, tie that thought back in and still have something a little bit more fun. Yes. Okay. Do you have any other suggestions um, or ideas for people to um, incorporate if they just want to kind of get started right away? Um, I would say, I'm hoping, I mean, obviously it's, it's hard for me to not be able to talk to you guys. 
Um, I'm hoping a lot of you are already on LinkedIn. If you're not, I cannot say it enough. That's, the, that's definitely the place to start. Um, for businesses, that really gives you um, a great tool to connect with others. Um, and then honestly, the other one I jumped to is Twitter. Twitter gives you, um, I think as an industry, I think a lot of businesses are on Twitter as sort of it, sometimes more monitoring or listening than actually interacting. Um, but that can give you easy ways to, short, to sort of uh, be sharing things easily um, and quickly. Wonderful. Some really great suggestions. Uh, and if anyone has any other um, questions or comments, I'd you know, be happy to um, either Jenny or I uh, answer them for you offline. Uh, we will uh, look at wrapping this up unless anyone else has anything else um, that they would like to ask. I have opened oh, up the poll. So, oh, go ahead. Amanda, I'm not sure if you can see. Um, so someone asked a question on my side. I'm not sure if you can see this. Um, okay, go ahead. Could you read that off, please? Yeah, so um, asking about how to explore Twitter more. Okay. Um, so. Going back to you know the basics, I think the best way to start on Twitter is to to start with an account, and then immediately start following the things that you think will be relevant to what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, Twitter is, like I said, a lot of people are on Twitter and may not be interacting as much. And my boss is a perfect example of this. He has a Twitter account. He's um, active. Um, He's active on Twitter, and he's able to share a lot of things that way, but he's, most of the time he's listening. Um, so immediately start following things that, are, that make sense to you. And then she <laughs> follow up, um, she's asking, is it much like Twitter, or like Facebook? Um, so it is in some regard like Facebook, um, just in that these days a lot of people, you know, it's a feed and you're constantly sharing information. Um, Twitter goes a lot faster. I guess if you're going to compare to Facebook, Twitter goes um, faster than Facebook. And obviously with character limits, um, you're only posting so much and you're, you're mainly posting little snippets. And then most often linking back to something larger if someone wants to, um, if someone wants to learn more. Okay. But yeah, you're, you're sharing a lot of content and then you're, um, liking the content that's there, and then, yeah, and basically following a lot of brands. Okay, and trying to drive traffic to your website would be another? Um... Yes. So across the board, that's a good point, Amanda. So across the board, some of your goals, too, are to drive traffic back to your, if you've got a web, you know, back to your website and back to your own other tools for your online presence. Um, so online, everything is connected, so make sure that, um, you know, you think about how one thing leads to something else and how someone can learn something here and then follow up with you in a different way. Fantastic. Did you have any other questions that came over to you? Um, I'm seeing one about ads, whether, um, whether Twitter has ads. And honestly, um, there are sponsored posts on Twitter I don't, that's not really in my realm of knowledge so much. I don't believe that it works the same way Facebook does with ads, and LinkedIn work with ads. Um, but we might have to look into that a little bit more. I think that's it. Okay, well some really great questions. I appreciate you taking the time to go through that. Um, anyone who's getting into social media, um, you know, you, you get into one thing and next thing you know you're wondering about how, how to, you know, move it forward in, in creating content and um, helping you reach your goals of, you know, prospecting, bringing on clients, candidates, um, et cetera. Okay, so with that, um, I, I really like to thank all of our participants in today's webinar and everyone for um, their participation in the, the Q&A section. Um, and Jenny for sharing your knowledge of using social media to grow your business. We will have a recording of the website or of the webinar available on our website at 
tricom.com. It's under the Resources and the Industry Insider Webinars tab. Thank you again for your participation and watch for information on our next webinar session. Have a fantastic day. Thank you.